Oh, wow, light just went down a lot there. Hey, hi, how are you? I, for one, I'm doing quite good. I'm, I'm excited. Reason being, um, got a new, uh, new coffee table from, from West Elm. I find it funny as I get older and become more of an adult. Um, seems like I used to be excited about, you know, stuff like cameras and a new, new tech, but uh, today it's a coffee table. Very excited. Anyways, I just wanted to talk and have a cool little sit down video with you guys today. Update you on some of the things that have been going on. I've been super busy with a lot of very cool projects. And obviously, as you guys saw, we put out that film that I shot for Prada just last week. I did a BTS of actually shooting the entire thing prior to that. So if you guys haven't seen those two videos, go check those out. Today, I wanted to maybe talk about some of those scenes, some of my favorite scenes, kind of break down how I shot them how I lit them, gear, the lenses and stuff that I was shooting on, maybe even talk about sound. A ton of you guys on that video, uh, really, really amazing feedback and words. Thank you so much. But a lot of you guys wanted to know about sound design, but uh, I don't know. let's build this coffee table. <laughs> Why'd you have to go so slow? Oh, you want me to go quicker? <laughs> I thought... <laughs> I don't open boxes all that often. Okay. This one is because, uh, make working on the couch a little bit better. You happy? Mm -hmm. All right. Nice. Oh, okay, um, quick note. The best chocolate in the entire world. Okay, so let's just go ahead and get like the first and probably most asked question out of the way first, uh, the gear that I used to create this piece. Some of you guys may have noticed in the BTS video that was posted prior to the film, um, I was shooting on a new camera and that is the red Komodo. Now I know a lot of you are probably gonna be like, why? Why Why did you buy a red? That is going to be answered along with a ton of other questions I've been getting about the red in a video here very soon. I'm gonna break down the entire rig, talk about everything that I bought and kind of the reasons I bought the camera, why I decided to make such a big investment coming soon. So just stay on the lookout for that. For the lenses, I shot the majority of this project on these new lenses that DZO sent me. These are their Vespid full frame primes. Honestly, extremely impressed with how these things perform. I'm gonna be doing an entire review and kind of a breakdown about cinema lenses. For those of you who are interested, you know, kind of maybe be making that step or transition away from photography glass be on the lookout for that also now when it came to planning in pre-production you know actually organizing this entire thing start to finish from the creative concept then to creating a storyboard creating a shot list kind of organizing all of my thoughts uh, I used Milano I found it because of the main guy you know Danny Gewurz he's been talking about Milano pretty often for a while now and I adopted kind of some of his methodology into planning this film and oh my God, game changer. In the like, past doing stuff like this, I mean, I've generally just kind of done it all on like Google Docs or uh, sometimes in Notion, depending on kind of what the project was. But using Milanote for this project was an unbelievably helpful thing. I mean, truly, I was able to lay everything out here. Um, I've got my references for videos that I kind of took some inspiration from, laying out kind of the structure and format that I had in mind for the shots. I've got my soundtrack options, locations, production info, um, a full shot list. I mean, this truly makes that entire process, pre-production start to finish, like such a breeze. And honestly, I really do feel like I was able to execute this whole project 
a lot better than I've really done any of my previous projects in the past because I had everything laid out and so well organized and easy to access and easy to quickly jot down an idea here, lay out a bunch of references. I've got screenshots and stills from different videos that I can use to just I don't know, kind of brainstorm. And then I can put the music itself like literally in here, it just plays. You upload a file and it's there. And so, but if you guys are interested in seeing a more kind of fully fledged look into my pre-production process, not just with this, but like how, you know, mentally I go about kind of planning and preparing and developing a shot list and, you know, putting these concepts together, uh, leave a comment down below. For this video, I ended up doing a lot of interior scenes, kind of more than I initially envisioned. It's not like every single time you kind of come up with these concepts and write out a storyboard and a shot list that it it works, like it translates once you finish and kind of edit the entire thing together. I started realizing that it was maybe a little difficult to kind of interpret what was actually happening in the story. It's basically I'm in my day-to-day -day life, you know, I'm waking up kind of going through the daily motions, you know, getting getting ready and starting my work and stuff like that. And I, I have this fragrance on, I spray on this Prada fragrance and periodically throughout the day, I'm, I'm sort of like drifting off into these daydreams. And it's these amazing landscapes, these beautiful textures and colors and emotions and, and moods and stuff. And in essence, the fragrance acts as this unique bridge, like this scent effectively kind of takes me or transports me into these places. I, I thought it was a really cool way to maybe kind of get somebody interested and captivated as to like, oh wow, like, this looks really, this looks really beautiful. Like I, I resonate with these textures and these colors. Like I, I wanna know what that fragrance smells like. I actually got a few people who commented that on the video. Thank you. By the way, maybe we'll answer that question now. It's a, it's a clone, like it's a men's fragrance. Does it actually smell good? And yes, I can say with 100% unbiased, like unpaid honesty, this is absolutely one of my favorite colognes like I've ever had. I've had a ton of different designer stuff and so definitely recommend it. Lighting for a ton of these interior scenes was really fun, really challenging. Um, I've personally never shot a, like a, a nighttime, like a moonlight scene where it's intended to be dark. Like effectively the only light source we have to motivate with is, is moonlight. I ended up lighting these shots uh, mostly with a four foot RGB tube light that I threw kind of up against the top of the window seal. I kind of flagged it so it wasn't really filling the entire room, but more uh, just kind of hitting down on the bed, kind of highlighting on my shoulder here. There's actually kind of some errors in this. There's a, a reflection on this glass vase here. There's reflection on this candle holder. Obviously moonlight is not gonna cause a reflection like that. So that's, I don't know, that's, I, I could have probably avoided that somehow. The actual opening intro shot, this was shot day for night, meaning that this was actually pretty much a daytime shot. It wasn't like 100% daylight. It was kind of like that dusk color. Uh, I just waited till the sun kind of fell behind the hill. So there was no hard shadows being cast anywhere in here, but I just brought the levels of the shot way, way, way down and pushed a bunch of blue into it to make it look um, like it was actually shot at nighttime. Rigging up this overhead shot was definitely like slightly sketchy. Uh, <laughs> two C stands kind of connected in the middle with a grip head. And then I, I don't even remember how I clamped the whole Komodo. I mean, it's the Komodo is small and, and light, but it's, it's not that small. It's not that light. And especially with these cinema lenses on there, I mean, that thing falling on my face would not feel good at all. So uh, wouldn't recommend. A pretty good majority of the interior scenes, uh, like the first one of me waking up in the bed and then some of the stuff in the living room, me sitting on the couch, that was all just uh, a lot of natural light. I used some negative fill um, really, really close up on side of me to add some shape and contrast into the image. But I mean, a lot of that stuff was really just with the big living room windows that we have. For the bathroom scenes, our mirror has this, you know, edge light that kind of goes all the way around it. And so I was able to use that kind of flag off, like just tape off certain sections of it to again, kind of create some more contrast and depth. Also some negative fill on the side of my face. The second shot of me in the bathroom washing my face, I actually did a little bit more to this scene in order to get it to have some good depth. This angle in particular, which is actually shooting into the mirror, uh, looked pretty flat. And so I had to do a good amount. Um, I used the four foot RGB tube kind of behind me to get 
a little bit of light uh, spilling onto like my head and my shoulders and kind of illuminate the door a little bit to give it some gradient so it wasn't just flat. The hero shots of the clone sitting on my dresser in the bedroom. Really, really happy with how these came out. Um, I was a little worried at first, but it all sort of fell into place. There was this shadow that was coming from this like window uh, frame that was, I was able to sort of place the product in, which took it out of the light so there wasn't a giant hot spot on it. And then I used um, a little bit of bounce right on the front of the product to actually light it up, get it to separate from the background. But I mean, just this nice highlight that is just all along the top of the dresser, you know, kind of spilling onto my arm. Like, I, I, I don't know, something about it worked out really, really well. Pretty happy with how all that stuff looked. Sound was definitely something that people were talking about a lot and leaving comments about. So thank you to everybody. I spent a pretty good amount of time kind of structuring everything out here. I mean, there was, uh, what, I don't know, like 12 layers of sound-ish, like really not that much in comparison to what a lot of people do. I think it did the job. I mean, it's not like this video needed a ton of sound in order to carry the story and make it feel very seamless. I guess just let me know down below if you guys are interested in seeing uh, a full-fledged video on sound design. Maybe I'll talk in depth about this project as well as maybe some of the other stuff that I've done in the past. Shooting this film for Prada, I mean, th this entire project is honestly something I never thought I would get the chance to do. I mean, the feeling, it's, it's kind of hard to describe in a way, but I hope you guys were able to take away something from this breakdown, kind of seeing my whole process. Again, if you guys want to see more specifics into each of these processes, whether it's the pre-production, you know, using Milanote or my sound design, uh, I know a lot of you guys have been wanting to see more stuff about color. I do plan to do a full video about color grading basics, kind of the entire workflow. Let me know down in the comments, of course. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next one.